Wales versus Italy. Build as the wooden spoon decider. And it's all just gone down in Cardiff. And I've got Elko with me here to talk about it. Hello, mate. Hey, TT. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Super Saturday has gone off with a bang. Absolutely. First point of order, George North. Uh, final game for Wales. An absolute legend. Crying in the anthems. And I just like... Just a word for him, basically. What a, what a top man. Ah, oh, absolute warrior. Um, yeah, I really felt for him in, in the in the uh, anthems. Uh, uh, he almost felt kind of over the edge a little bit, but I was thinking, wow, he's he's gone. And then and then literally when the anthem stopped, he was like, whoop, whoop, you know, shirt off, I'm ready to go, sort of thing. But he has been. Uh, an unbelievable servant to to Welsh rugby and uh, Irish and British lines um, rugby, giving us some amazing memories and a you know what what an athlete, um, but an amazing rugby player. And, and uh, I've never met the guy, but by all accounts, an, an absolute legend of a human as well. And um, I wish him absolute luck in in what he's doing next. Brilliant, brilliant guy. Absolutely. Okay, let's get into the game and. It went very flat very quickly in this game. The stadium, it felt like there was a huge thing for the anthems and all of that kind of stuff. Blew the start whistle and then it was just dead for, I don't know, five, ten minutes at least. There was a lot of kick tennis going on, very little rugby played, quite a few errors. And it was just like, oh, God, it, like it felt painful to watch at times. Um, yeah. How did you see these opening state stances? Yeah. Going? It, it was an anxiety with a capital A, wasn't it? It was just, oh. Um, and this is where, you know, last week in the in the, in the the Principality, it was just rocking, wasn't it? It was just huge noise. And, the, and then, and you can use that. And then, you know, as a player, when you've experienced that and then you experience what we, what they would have experienced today, it must be horrific because... You know, you could hear you could hear people talking. <laughs> it's just so quiet, and that's it's just human reaction to to pressure. It's anxiety. It's and it carries on. To, it clearly carried onto the pitch. You could see the guys just were, particularly the Welsh players, were just all over the shop. Um, and um, yeah, it must must be really tough. That, that, that's the problem with having such an incredible. Um, home advantage sometimes for Wales. It, it is, I think, probably the best home nation stadium and um, the atmosphere in there when it's cooking is just incredible but when it's not then it, it you know it's, it's the old, it's the thing we've spoken about a few times um when you talk about when kickers are going to kick what's worse you know people making noise and kind of like the french do boon or the absolute silence and it's the silence it just you know you're looking around going oh what's what, what have i done wrong sort of thing so um yeah it was it was um i, I would say a very tough sort of atmosphere to play in for the first 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. And during that period, Wales actually had more of the ball. They actually had more of the territory as well. It was just every time they tried to run, they literally went nowhere. They went absolutely nowhere. Italy looked so, so comfortable on defence. And they just kept pushing them back, pushing them back. And and Wales had no answer to it. No, look, I, I said uh, I said to you before we came in, I'm going to be really harsh early doors, and then I'm going to I'm not I'm not going to be because I think it's really dis- disrespectful to Italy, who I thought were absolutely brilliant today, and particularly in defence. But Wales, I mean, look, there there were there were player mistakes, no doubt. Okay, we saw knock ons, we saw missed tackles, and everything else, but their game plan was absolutely atrocious today. I've never, I mean, it was painting my numbers. Let's do this because our coach has told us to do this. It's like, what are you doing? Like you could, see, there was, there was, there was times where you're like, what, what why do you keep just running into a really aggressive, strong, accurate Italian defense who are putting you behind the gain line? Why do you keep doing that? Because you've been told to. And then there was bits where you, you had, and we spoke about this last week, um, uh, when um, I think it was the full back had a, had an opportunity to break and and they had a really tired um, I think the second row in front of them last week that happened three or four times today where you had an attacking red jersey going against a blue jersey and what for whatever reason they went to oh no well, our game plan is to do this you know Gatland I've got a lot of time for Gatland but 
I'm I'm really annoyed today because I just think either the players have got to stand up and and sort of um, challenge what he is asking him, them them to do, um, or he's got to go. Um, because I just feel that it was really really poor today. And I felt I felt at times sorry for the players um, because. Th- th- I just feel there's more to that team because when they do go, I mean, the last five, ten minutes, which we'll go to, was amazing because they just played with what was in front of them. They didn't care what was told beforehand. But I just feel, sorry to rant, I just feel that it was really poor coaching from Wales or at least getting the message on to say, you know, I've messed up here. This is not the game plan to win the game. Play what's in front of you. Don't play by numbers. Yeah, interesting because it seemed to me like the players didn't really trust what they were doing. Like they weren't taking the ball all the way to the line. They weren't running really convincing decoy lines. It looked like everything. I think your phrase there, paint by play by numbers, was exactly right. And they were so easy to pick off and so easy for the Italian defence to get a hold of. And then you get to the 20th minute and complete contrast, absolute contrast as Italy rip Wales to part apart with some brilliant play at the line uh, from Brex and Melancello. Varney looking really sharp today as well. The best he's looked all tournament, which led to the Ioni try by the posts. And it's 11-0 after 20 minutes. And it looks like Wales have got no foothold in the game at all at this stage. Yeah, and I, I guess the difference is, and again, we've spoken about this before, is, is you know, the, the coaches kind of personality coming out in the way the team play. I mean, those the, the way Italy's backline play and how the centres interact and, and how they create opportunity, I think is from Casada. I really do. I, I just I just see his kind of DNA on us and how they're how they're acting. Um, you know, you got to take your opportunities, of course. But it was just so there was deception, there was hard lines. It was difficult to defend. And then if you flip that on the Welsh side. I just feel like the, the the Italians just went, yeah, we'll just let you do what you want to do, and we'll just we're so confident in our D. Their defense is light and day. I keep saying this from World Cup. It is, I would say, it's the best individually. Maybe not system, but individually, it is the best defense in the Six Nations. You well, I, mean? I think, yeah, I think it was system wise as well today because they had, you know, they had enough time to get everything organized. You know, they were just. I looked at several times and they're a good meter behind the hind foot of the ruck. You know, they give themselves plenty of space to make sure they're never going to be offside, get themselves organized, get their spacings right. And then when they get the chance to make the hit, they properly hit people, especially the centers. Yeah. And I thought uh, Lamoureux today as well, tackled like an absolute beast. Um, Amazing. And they're the the blonde um, second row. Oh, he is just different level. You know they're 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 playing well. Well, well I was going to say well beyond. No, they're playing where they should be playing. Um, the level, you know, the defense is 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 enormous. It's a, it's brilliant. Yeah, and and as if Wales weren't struggling enough in the game anyway, then Italy absolutely started to dominate at the scrum as well with Fischetti, who's had a couple of tough days at, uh, at the office in the front row. You know, really getting one over on Dylan Lewis a number of times. And on the other side of the scrum, we saw this nasty little habit that Gareth Thomas is getting into where he steps out and stands up. And that's, I mean, referees are going to look at that and penalise it all day long. He's got to yeah. work harder to stay in the scrum. And he did it twice today again, I think. Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I, I would think, hopefully, that the way that the Italians have come on, they're probably having those conversations with the officials beforehand and, in, in the opportunities that they do uh, with the meetings they have. But, you know, you, you I, I was watching it today and I was just going, they're so um, comfortable, uh, reliable, you know, um, the, the scrum looked like they were going to win it. Their line-out looked like they were going to win it. Every time they went to, into contact, their rooks were so compact and like Ireland, like just really accurate. Um, every player seemed to know what he was doing. They've come on leaps and bounds, man. They 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 look like a really really good side, um, and they're probably they're probably disappointed uh, in one way um, of where they've ended up because I think they they probably should have beaten England. Um, they didn't bother challenging us for a reason. They that won't happen again. They'll go for us next next year. But yeah, really 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 um, really impressive performance from them today in in their set play. 
Yeah, it was. And 11 and a half time was, uh, I mean, on the scoreboard, it's still fairly tight, but it felt like Italy were com- in complete control. Yeah. And it came out in the second half and Wales started attacking again, fairly similar to the first half. It just looked like they were going nowhere until Varney made a really bad defensive error on the edge. He's, he defends on, on the end of the line quite often as a scrum half. And he just got himself pointed inwards, uh, which let somebody down away down the left and led to a, a, a neck roll. But until that point, Wales had done nothing on attack at all. And it was only one little defensive error there that really let them in. Yeah, it's it's almost like the Welsh guys kind of play the way they've been told to play and then get to a stage where they just go, do you know what I mean? Or they run out of phases where they, you know, the, 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 the alphabet is there and then they, they they go, oh, well, let's, let's just play the way we want to play sort of thing. Um, yeah, he, 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 it was, it was uh, unfortunate that neck roll, but it was a fair, it was a fair choice, and, and they had loads of momentum there. They made them loads of breaks. I'm not sure it was that wasn't the break. No, it wasn't where um, Scrum Half got injured, but um, just before, just after, I think that was. But um, yeah, they, 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 they just didn't feel Welsh teams to me are fluid and play what's in front of them, and that's their magic. And I think if you put too much discipline on us, it, it, it kind of takes away from the strength that they have. Yeah, they did. They did find some of that magic a couple of times throughout the game, but it was very brief. It was when there was some kick tennis had gone wrong, or you know there was a break in the game here for whatever reason, or a quick turnover. But it, it went back to sort of structure, shall we call it, very very quickly afterwards. And then, well, soon after that, Panny scored, and again, Italy just showed Wales how to play the game at pace, at the game line, with amazingly uh, accurate running lines and deceptive running lines, timing of passing. And Pani, I mean, it could have been Capuozzo, to be honest, the way he finished that. It was a beautiful finish. Oh, listen, he's he's a good player, Pani. Jesus, and he can he can kick a ball and he can take a shot on the, on the cheek as well. Um, <laughs> no, that was... That was unbelievable. I, I only had, a, had a, a bit to say in that as well. Was that all set play or, or maybe a second phase? But it was, they're they're happy to go at it. You know, they just seem like a happy bunch of guys who are wanting to push, you know, looking for outside seams and outside edges. And they're just looking to play as opposed to bashing. There is, there is bashing. There's loads of that, obviously because it has to be, but it just, it doesn't look like they're looking for contact. They look like a team that are happy to, to, to try things. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I think Kassad is a great chess player. I think a lot of the stuff he does is he knows what defensive coaches will be thinking and he's finding space and telling the players, just trust, just make the pass. The guy will be there. And that, that finish was unbelievable from him. That was he looked a little bit surprised, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, a magic, a magic, a magic finish. He was really, really good, and, and from the boot as well, he was really good as well. Yeah, and they trusted him with the boot for touch kicking as well from penalties. Yep. You know, he's got a long kick, much longer than Garbisi, so it makes a difference in the game if that penalty, you know, that line out rather is ten meters further up the pitch. So eighteen nil, and at this point, Wales basically essentially emptied the bench, and somebody that came off the bench made a massive difference in this game. And that was Mason Grady because your, he did. Your, your favourite player, Mason Grady. <laughs> We're talking about him all championship and eventually it comes good. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. He just, he just ran direct. He just got over the game line. He came off for Nick Tompkins as well, which I wasn't expecting. Um, and he just, yeah, he just found a way to get momentum into the game. And then, then Wales can play. Then, then they've got the opportunity to be instinctive and just follow what's in front of them. But until they got over that game line, which Grady gave them, almost every time he touched the ball, I think. Uh, it made a massive difference. And Rowlands as well actually carried really well when he came on. He did, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he was he was much better, I think, than, than, than Beard that was there. Much more direct. And this is it, you know. Rugby, rugby's so simple. And I think when, when, you, when, you, when you put lots of uh, organised phase play in, that takes away direct running. You know, because you're, you're oh, I've got to pass to those three guys and they're going to do this and then I've got to do this move. Sometimes it's just about getting the ball in your hand and running with grit and determination. And those two, I mean, Grady was unbelievable. Every time he got the ball, and last week as well when he came on, you just go route one. 
and and then you get gain line and and then it becomes a man test right when you're doing all this sort of stuff it's not it's kind of oh well that happened because we weren't and you can you can you can hear the guys going oh that's because you you didn't resource that rook or whatever forget about that stuff sometimes when you're at home you've just got to run hard at your opposite number and run over them and if you fail that that's fine you go again and you keep doing it and that and then when the crowd watch that and they go, yeah, yeah, you've hit him, bosh. When the crowd can't get behind it, oh, we're doing a pass out to that pod in three, and then we're going, and you're going, what they do? Oh, we're organising a kick chase. Fuck, I mean, what, what's that about? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense to the average punter, right? You just want just blood and guts and just go, you know? And that's, you know, uh, particularly when you're with young kids and you're, you're you're facing a wooden spoon. The the crowd don't care. They just want to see you go and take names and go at it. And the, and the two guys that came on, um, uh, particularly Grady, and I know you're a massive fan. I think he's a brilliant. He's a big lump as well. He was he was superb when he came on. You know. Yeah. And while we're talking about Grady, uh, that collision with him and Panny was nasty, actually. And oh. for for a little brief moment there, I thought. So one of the refereeing uh, quartet or panel were going to try and get this upgraded to foul play, which it never was. Like it shows so little game understanding if you if you think I, there's any foul play there whatsoever. And fair play to Matteo Reynal, he, he batted all that way and was like, "No, no, look how fast that's happened." There's just two people running towards a bouncing ball, and I was, I, I was if that had been given as anything other than what he did, then I'd have been distraught at the game. Well, TT, we're two peas in a pod because I heard. It wasn't Dixon, was it? No, he was in the other game. No, he was in Ireland, was he? Yeah. Um, someone said, that's foul play for me. I was like, what? <laughs> There's no way. He's going for the ball. Okay, he catches it beforehand and then it becomes a tackle. But there's in the, you've got to watch it in full speed. He was he was going for the ball. There was no way that was foul play. No yeah. way. Um, you can't... Neither of them could go in low because you're trying to work out where the ball's going. You're not trying to make a tackle. That's the whole point. You're upright because you're not trying to make a tackle. That's the difference when when you look at some of the tackle uh, problems we're having. So yeah, no, I, th- I think I-, I thought he had a great game actually. Um, the French referee, I thought I, I, he's one of my favourite guys. I think he he lets things go and bleh. Um But oh yeah, I'm re- I would have been really annoyed if I had been given uh, anything other than what it was, just to you know play on. Accident. Yeah, there does seem to be a slight changing of the tide here, I think, in terms of incidents. Um, I think they, I felt it last week as well. I feel like there might have been a directive from World Rugby just to calm it down a little bit and not think everything's foul play, not think every head contact needs to be a yellow card. Uh, um, yeah, 100%. I think he's going right. And scrums as well. I think they've been told just let let, let them just play from the scrum and Try not ball to out and play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Talking again, a ball out and playing. Very soon after that, Wales actually played some decent rugby for the first time uh, in the entire game, which led to Thomas Williams. I'm pretty sure he thought he was just about to jog in and score when Ross Vincent came out of nowhere and chopped him down using all that Exeter gas that he gets. Um, and also, very important point here, uh, who was it who came on? Zuliani got in and got the turnover at the same ruck, which was equally as impressive. Yeah, another, Vincent, another one of your your spots. Um, I mean, how quick is that kid? I mean, unbelievable to get back. I, I was like, that's a try. And then yeah. straight away, an amazing tackle. Unfortunately, Williams was injured as a result of that. Um, and yeah, you're right. The, the, the kid that then got on and prevented... Williams from turning it was a really clever bit of defensive play. He didn't even he didn't have to get the ball. He just stopped Williams from turning, and he was turned the wrong way. And uh, Italy Italy get get the turnover. But that was I mean that was normally you'd see that getting finished off. You know, um, it was a great bit of defensive play from the Italians. It was, but it didn't hold the down back for too much longer. Elliot D uh, got over shortly afterwards after some. Lots of short drives. So it's now 7-18, right? Wales have not been in the game really at all up until the last few moments. And then Italy decided to start giving away penalties. Lucchese, the replacement hooker, gave away two. One from the kickoff and one from the next play after that. Wales get a line out in Italy's 22. And then Mackenzie Martin knocks the ball on immediately. And it was like all that momentum gone. 
absolutely gone. And that was that was the game, basically. Italy got a couple of penalties shortly afterwards. And then, you know, the late flurry of tries as well from Wales with Roland and Grady getting over. But that was the key moment. That was the time that if Wales are yeah. going to win, like, you did, that was the time. Such a shame. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that would have given them a little bit of time to, to get the, you know, what they needed after. Yeah. These things happen. I don't mind that stuff. It's just you know, it is it is what it is. You can't you can't hang the kid for for it. Um, he he, he will be he will be a good player. Um, for sure. Um, yeah, the Italians I think probably stopped playing, and and the good thing for them is they can continue to keep learning from from this. You know, I think Casada will pull them in and go. You know, what could we have done to this? Why did we just sort of kind of? I mean, the referees are always trying to. Even up the game in that stage as well, and and we'll go and we'll tr- and momentum will be created, and um, this is all really good learnings for for that this Italian squad, um, and and maybe for the, for the for the Welsh boys as well, maybe not as much as, as for the Italians, uh, but because uh, it's negative, but um, yeah, it was a shame for that young boy to make make that mistake. But hey, these things happen. Yeah, and then the game really finished with a really incredibly bittersweet moment with George North getting injured in the lead-up to the Rollins try, and he was getting carried off the pitch or helped off the pitch for the last his last moment in an international as Johan Lloyd was kicking the conversion. So obviously he got the he got the incredible sort of send off and sort of moment, but in a really bad situation yeah. for him, it's, it's yeah. terrible, really. Yeah, I felt really bad. I, I had 50 quid on him scoring a try today as well. <laughs> so I was like, ah, yeah, that's not going to happen. But no, no in, in all seriousness, no, it was, it was, I saw it happen in the backfield and I was like, oh, it doesn't look good because it was, I think someone rolled into him or it was off, or like it was a, it wasn't a direct, it was kind of something hit him as opposed to whatever. And you could see on the ground, I was like, oh, no, not this way, not this way. Um, then the breaks really, uh, it's a tough one. He's, uh, you know, I guess he's not the good thing for him, I guess, is he's not he's not stopping rugby, he's going to be keep on playing. And, um, I don't know, it might not be the last time we see him in red. I'm just going to say that if there's a change of coaching staff, I don't think he'll be. <laughs> I'm just, you know, just going to put it right there. I reckon he could do a great job at second row or in the at six, six, at, yeah. Can you imagine him at six? He'd be awesome. <laughs> well, while we're talking about coaching, though, uh, you know, allegedly, apparently, Warren Gatland offered his resignation directly after the game in a very sort of unofficial way. Really? Yeah. Uh, he said it in oh, the post. I didn't see the interview. I've just seen this little clips on Twitter. What, without a payoff? Uh, well, well, that was what the question that somebody asked. Like, apparently, he no. said in the post-match interview, I offered my, you know, I asked, I said... If you want me to resign, I will. But the the CEO said, "No, no, we don't want that." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, as a bloke that works in recruitment, I've seen that loads of times. It, it, there's a big difference between saying, "If you want me, if you want me to leave and to pay me off, I'll leave," as opposed to "I'll resign with no things on." <laughs> there's no way he's he he would have. He's a wily old boy. He he'll have, he'll be the same as Eddie. He he'll have a big old payoff. And look, listen. Uh, it's really harsh to say. Look, I was I was chatting to another friend of of, of my, Colum, who who you know very well, Colum Hannon, and um, sort of. I think that the day of the dictator is gone. I think the the day of the the angry coach who says my way or highway, I think is gone. I think you've got to be more like a Farrell, um, like someone who cares about you and creates an amazing atmosphere where you can you can bring what you can bring to the table and the whole thing about my way this 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 and there's no reason behind it i think is gone um and uh, you know eddie jones is probably the king of that and gatlin's probably close to that so you know I, I, i'm a big fan of him in terms of how simplified he makes play but if all the stuff around it isn't correct and the players don't feel valued then you know you need to you need to walk away sort of thing but he won't go without any without a big payoff no way no, no way at all. Right then, mate, let's bring this one to an end. Is there any sort of other key points that we've missed or anything else you want to say about this game, or Italy in particular, their best ever championship? Yeah, I think they've been an absolute shot. You know, uh, they've been brilliant. It's been, a, it's been a good 
a good competition. Um, for you know, all the countries, I think have probably had one or two results that they can be really happy with. Um, but I think Italy have probably been the surprise, if we can say that. And I just really hope, you know, listen, we were during the World Cup because it's been so poor. We were talking about Georgia and Portugal coming into this. Nah, it, we've got the right the right team in there, and um, I'm delighted for them. And um, you know, let, let them. I hope they continue with Casada and um, and and become really, really great. Uh, and and maybe maybe challenge in the next uh, five years. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this Italy team. I've always said it. You know, there was clearly a very unhappy camp during the World Cup with the changing in coaching staff. They look like a very happy team now. And also, like when you look about their bench coming on, they still they look just as strong. You know, those bench players coming on. So they're building strength and depth. The under 20s have had another excellent campaign as well for Italy. So the future is very, very bright for this Italy team. And I'm a big fan of that. So that's brilliant. Okay, people at home, what do you think? Where do you think the game was won and lost? How do you think Wales will be feeling? What do they need to do to get back on track during their, well, they've got a pretty hectic summer schedule coming up as well. Let us know in the comments down below and we will join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind. While you're down there, it helps other people find it. And Elko, thank you very much for your time today. Go and enjoy your steak. Thanks, CT. Yeah, enjoy the games this afternoon and, and England and, uh, and France this evening. Good man. And for people at home, you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.